If you want to become a Photoshop expert, one of the fundamental things you're going to need to do is become master of the marching ants. In today's video, we're going to take a look at nine different ways you can create selections in Photoshop and when each is most applicable. I'll also give you helpful tips along the way and soon you too will be master of the marching ant. When it comes to Photoshop, one of the questions I get the most is, how do you change the background of an image? Or how do you cut an image out of its background and place that image in a new background? Well, the answer to that is marching ants. Or as they're really known, selections. The reason they're called marching ants is because of the way the lines move around the edges of the selection in Photoshop. A lot of your time in Photoshop will be spent making selections and the more ways you know, the quicker you can get the job done and done right. Sometimes you just want to make a quick rough selection in Photoshop. Other times you might need something a little bit more precise and then some methods are color based, others are contrast based. The method you use to create a selection will totally depend on the subject you're selecting and the outcome you're trying to achieve. Every method we'll talk about has its own strengths and weaknesses, and when you know them, you can exploit them. So today, we're going to explore some of the different selection techniques, how they work together, and when they work best. Method number one, the marquee tool. This is the most basic way to create a selection. You probably already know this one and how to use it because many other applications feature a similar tool. The marquee tool can create two types of selections, a box or a circle. The tool shortcut is M. To use this tool, simply click and drag the selection to cover the desired area. Once the tool is active, hold down shift and press M to toggle between the regular and the elliptical marquee tools. Pro tip, dragging out guides for two edges of a circle will help you find the starting point of your selection. Holding down shift while you drag out the selection will ensure it stays perfectly circular. This is called constraining the proportions. Holding option or alt on a PC while dragging will draw a perfect circle from the center outward. Next up, the lasso tools. These tools are more complex than the marquee tools, so they give you a little bit more freedom over the shape of your selection, but only to a certain extent. There are three variations of this tool, the default lasso, the polygonal lasso, and the magnetic lasso. These tools shortcut are L and again can be cycled through by holding down shift and repeatedly pressing L. Pro tip, this same procedure works with all tools that have more than one variation. The default lasso tool is a freeform drawing tool. It's very simple to use, simply click and hold while you move your mouse around the area you want to select. It works a little bit better if you have a drawing monitor. Now, some people use the Wacom Cintiq, which is an excellent product, but because it's made for professionals, it has a professional price tag. But check it out anyway. I'll put the links in the description below. A much more affordable option is the UG2150. This is what I use and it does a great job. But back to the lasso tool, even with a drawing screen and even if you have a very steady hand, this tool is not very precise and your selections will be sloppy. The polygonal lasso tool. This tool lets you click from one point to another to create your selection shape. Its drawback is that it can only create straight edge selections. So it's best to use this tool for selections that don't need any curved edges. The magnetic lasso. Simply move your mouse along the edge and this tool will guess where the outline needs to go. You can also guide it by clicking if you're not happy where it's laying down the edge. Method number three, the magic wand tool. This is probably the first tool that anyone learns to use in Photoshop. And the reason, because it's so easy. To use this tool, press W on your keyboard, click on an area and Photoshop will make a selection based on the color and contrast. You can tweak the settings for this tool in the top toolbar, Tolerance, Contiguous, and Sample All Layers. Now Tolerance, 
controls the tool's sensitivity. A higher tolerance will select more, uh, more of the image and a lower tolerance will select less. Contiguous will let you select any pixels on the canvas that are close in color to the one color that you clicked instead of just a connected area. And then sample all layers or just the one you're working on. This tool is great if you need to make a quick selection, but always use the refine edge feature on the selection so your image doesn't look like someone put it through a wood chipper. The refine edge feature. This window refines the edges of your selection. It works like a brush and like all the brushes in Photoshop is controlled by the open and closed brackets. Paint along the ugly edges and Photoshop's AI technology will help you define your edges better. You can smooth the edges, feather them some and shift the edge in or out. All this helps your edges look like this and not like this. Next, we're talking about the quick selection tool. The quick selection tool makes it really easy to select things that don't look like they were cut and pasted. So this tool is accessed by pressing W like for the magic wand, but then shift toggling W to get to the quick selection tool. This tool works like a brush, so you can change the size of the tool by using the open and closed bracket keys on your keyboard. Use a brush size that makes painting the selection easy. Don't use a big size to trace something little or the other way around. Just drag the tool over the subject and stop when the marching ants get to the edge. The tool is smart and can detect the changes in pixels, so most of the time it'll stop on the edge correctly. If it doesn't, just click on the Alt key to switch the deselect mode and drag the selection back to where it should be. Like the Magic Wand tool, it's always advisable to use the Refine Edge function once you have your basic selection made. Selection method number five, the pen tool. This tool gives you the ultimate control for making selections. It's got quite a steep learning curve and really it needs its own tutorial. So perhaps that's one we'll do in the future. However, this tool, once you get the use the hang of it, you'll really love using it. And it's one of my favorite ways of creating selections because of the accuracy and the control you have over making the selection. The reason this tool is amazing is because it's got the ability to create curves. This tool is really a path tool and we'll cover those in another time, but paths can be converted to selections by right clicking and then choosing convert the selection. Here you can feather the edges if you wanted to and okay, perfect selection. The next method we're going to talk about is channels. Creating complex sel selections for things like hair and fur can be a really daunting task. But if you create selections using your image's color information, you can do a pretty decent job in a short space of time. So to create a selection using this method, you need to look at the color channels and find the one where your object looks the most clearly defined. White equals fully selected and black equals not selected. Now you can use a variety of Photoshop's tools to enhance the color information and use it to your advantage to create a pixel perfect selection in minutes. We'll cover this in a different video because there's just so much to talk about. But for right now, be aware of this method and if you're curious, go explore it some more. Selection method number seven, color range. Color range selection allows you to select all the colors in the same spectrum. For example, you want to select all the blue in an image. So use the eyedropper tool to pick the color, hold shift to add to that selection and option alt on a PC to take away from it. The fuzziness slider is like the magic wand's tolerance. It lets you control how accurate the color matching is. This tool works really well if there is a well-defined color variation in the image that you're working on. Selection method number eight, select subject. This is a new feature that Adobe introduced this year. Select subject makes use of artificial intelligence technology to identify the subject in an image and create a selection around it. You can use this method to create a quick selection and then use the other selection tools to refine the selection a little better. Once again, you should use Refine Edge with this tool to better define the selection and achieve a much better result. The last method we're talking about today is one I only recently discovered and I wanted to share it with you all. Method number nine, focus area. 
This method is really useful if you have to make quick selections based on what's in focus and what's not. There'll be times when you work on images and they have a shallow depth of field. And the way I'm going to show you now makes it really, really easy for you to make a selection based on what's in focus. You can use the sliders to adjust the settings and see the effect it will have in the preview window. Every image is different, so it's a process of trial and error. Once you're happy with this selection, click OK and again, use the other tools to add, subtract and refine your selection. I encourage you to take some time and explore these different selection methods. Try different images, see how the settings work, see how they work on different subjects and colors and contrasts. Just get yourself comfortable with each different way and soon you'll be able to know which tool is best for which job without even thinking about it. Question of the day. What are your tips and tricks for creating great selections? Let me know in the comments below. That's all I have for you guys today. Hopefully found, you found some really useful information out of this. Remember, if you want to keep up with us and the videos we post, click subscribe over here to be notified every single time we release a video. Check out this link right here for more of our Photoshop stuff. Thanks for watching guys and I'll see you next time. Until then, stay inspired and keep those creative juices flowing.